Okay, I think everybody's here and logged in. So at 5.12 p.m. on June 16th, 2020, I would like to call this meeting to order. This is the annual meeting, the Board of Directors annual meeting for uh, Native Health. And we are holding our meeting in virtual format this year due to uh, COVID-19 restrictions. And we are recording. We have an agenda that we're going to follow tonight and several different speakers to provide information. First off, I'm going to start with uh, the roll call of our board of directors. Christina Brown. I'm present. Charlton Wilson, Dr. Charlton Wilson. Thank you, I am here. Thank you. Olivia Wanika. I know you're here, I can see you. Tanisha Saning, Sun, I'm gonna, Sun, Sunjido? Present. Thank you, Tanisha. Olivia's here. Thank you, Olivia. Carol DeHosey is absent tonight. Rishi, Dr. Rishi Popat. Good afternoon, I'm here. Thank you. Mr. Sean Sellers. Present. Thank you, sir. Rihanna Jaglowski. Good evening, present. Thank you, Brianna. Elena Young. Thank you, Board of Directors. Okay, first up on our agenda this evening will be our CEO, Walter Marillo, who's going to give a welcome and introductions. Well, good evening. This is Walter Marillo, the CEO of Native Health. I'm glad we all could make it virtually uh, in the COVID environment. We're here for our annual meeting and in our annual meeting, our uh, principal agenda item is to elect new or reappoint existing uh, board members. So um, briefly, if the, uh, after now the uh, board members, if you'd like to reintroduce yourself, uh, that would be good. And then uh, staff members who have participated can do that as well. So uh, maybe Jeannie, if we could start with you. Okay. My name is Jeannie Adekai. I am the current, <clears throat> excuse me, I am the current board president for Native Health, I'm helping to facilitate our um, organization in any way I can. I am a uh, human resources uh, director for Maricopa Community College District, um, primarily responsible for um, strategic staffing or recruiting selection and hiring processes. Um, I have been with Native Health, I believe this is my second year. Uh, I have enjoyed it immensely. Um, this year we have had to deal with uh, some challenging and quick changes that Walter is going to talk about more uh, with the organization. I am so proud of this organization and its contributions and its ability to um, address the pandemic. Thank you, Jeannie. And Christina Brown, our Vice President. Hi, I'm Christina Brown. I'm a marketing development manager for Swire Coca-Cola, which is a local bottling company here in uh, Arizona. I've been with Native Health for two years, and it's been my pleasure to serve on the board. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Um, next, we have Dr. Charlton Wilson, who is the treasurer. Hi, my name is uh, Charlton Wilson. I'm a physician uh, and a uh, board member, I believe, for in my fifth year or on my, or starting my fifth year, one of those, uh, and I've had the pleasure of being the treasurer during this time as well. Uh, my, uh, I am currently the chief medical officer of Mercy Care, and I've had the great privilege of being a commissioned officer in the public health service and working in the Indian Health Service in a number of locations, including at the Phoenix Indian Medical Center over my career. 
Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Uh, and Olivia Wanika, our secretary. Hi, I'm Olivia Wanika. I am um, from the Navajo Reservation. I currently am employed with um, a new lease as a supervisor of the individual development account. This is my first year as a board member with Native Health, and I am enjoying every bit of it. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. And Tanisha Sangino, our member at large. Hello, my name is Tanisha Sangino. I am with my second year um, on the board for Native Health. I am a social worker with ASU's Child Welfare Education Program, and I'm a member of the White Mountain Apache Tribe. Thank you. And um, Sean Sellers. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Sean Sowers uh, in my day job, but I work for United Healthcare Community Plan as the Arizona Tribal Relations Coordinator. And I've been a proud board member for the past five years with Native Health and uh, I'm absolutely delighted and thrilled everyone could join us to this evening. And I'm also a enrolled member of the Navajo Nation. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. And Dr. Rishi Popat. Hello, my name is uh, Rishi Popat. I believe this is my uh, fourth, maybe fifth year on the board. I'm excited. I love all the events Native Health puts together. Excited about laughter of, of, is the best medicine. Um, love meeting new peoples, designing smiles. That's my day job as an orthodontist, but these days everyone's wearing a mask, so we can't see people smiling anymore. Thanks, Dr. Popat. And Elena Young. I believe Elena is absent this evening, but okay. Brianna is here. Okay, Bri Brianna. Hello, I'm Bri Jagelski. I'm celebrating my first anniversary as a member of Native Health Board um, at this annual event, so thank you. Um, my day job, I'm a healthcare attorney representing physician and hospitals across um, the valley, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Bri. And, um, Absent also is Ms. Carol DeHosey. So in, in a staff, I, I'm Walter Rowe, as I said, I'm the CEO of Native Health. I've been with Native Health for 21 years or so, uh, the last 10 as the CEO. And I'm really very pleased that uh, hopefully that people are listening and, and uh, uh, want to be involved with Native Health in our annual meeting. A little, this is probably the least attended annual meetings in the uh, 30 years or so I've been involved with Native Health. We've had as many as uh, 300 in our annual meeting, but I think circumstances are way different this year. And uh, I'm a Choctaw from, uh, Choctaw from Oklahoma, and I really have enjoyed being with Native Health as a board member, as staff, and I've lived in Phoenix since uh, 1981 as a, a sixth grader or seventh grade. So, um, Next, we we have uh, other staff with us, Miss um, Angela Young. Good evening, and um, thank you, um, everyone, uh, for being on this call. And yeah, this is quite different. Uh, myself, I am a um, member of the Choctaw Tribe, um, as well as from Oklahoma. I uh, promise Walter and I were not kin. If you look and, and see how tall I am, you'll know that. <laughs> But um, it is a pleasure to be um, a member of Native Health, and I have a combined uh, with tribal and urban uh, leadership 30 years under my belt. Um, and uh, out of those 30, um, 18 of those years have been specifically with urban Indian health business. Thank you. Thanks, Angela. And then we have our health services administrator, Deanna Sinkster. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Deanna Sangster. I'm a member of the Navajo Nation and I am the health services administrator here at Native Health. I've been here for about 27 years. Coming up in August will be 28. And I love Native Health and everything that we do and the staff that are here. And I thank the board of directors for your guidance and everything for us. Um, and have a great meeting. Thanks, Deanna. Um, and Dr. 
uh, Diana Dunnigan, our medical director. Maybe I'm muting Dr. Dunn again. I'm attempting to unmute and if we can, we'll come back to her. We also have Emily Nielsen Beatty, our behavioral health director. Hello, my name is Emily Nielsen Beatty. I'm the behavioral health director at Native Health. And uh, it's a privilege to be here with the board and, and members of the senior management team for this year's annual board meeting. Um, I've been with Native Health since 2011 in multiple positions, everything from an intern to a behavioral health ass assessment specialist, a counselor, coordinator, and now director. So um, I really enjoy seeing all of the growth that this organization um, ha has been able to achieve um, and, and really excited to be at the forefront of integrated healthcare and of course all the, the opportunities have been afforded here. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you, Emily. And we also have our, our newest member of senior management, Ms. Francie Spencer. Good evening. Um, I'm just uh, honored to be here tonight. Um, I've worked with Native Health for five years um, under Craig Patti, who has retired this past year, and uh, we're really going to miss him after 20 years of service. He's done a really great job um, in mentoring me and also building Native Health to where it's at. Um, so I look forward to working with the board again on our laughter is the best medicine and uh, um, persevering through what we've been through with COVID and uh, just continuing the great work that's been laid down uh, for our foundation. So with that, thank you and have a great evening. All right, thank you. And then we have our compliance officer, Dr. John Molina. Uh, got now with the uh, listen to now. Good afternoon, everybody. This is John Molina, and I uh, appreciate um, the, the the introduction, Walter. And I just want to welcome all the board members uh, to, to this meeting. Um, I am the compliance officer for Native Health. I've been with Native Health for four years now, actually. And um, with our team, we started the compliance program actually four years ago. Um, I've had a lot of experience over the last 25 years working with the ITU system and both in the practice capacity and in administrative roles and have really enjoyed working at Native Health and can just say that it's a very innovative forward uh, thinking or organization, a great team. You got great people working here and I've really enjoyed my time here and uh, there, there's always more to venture into, more to do and I just appreciate the support of the board and the work that you're doing for Native Health. So. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Lena. And then we have Jordan Begay. Thank you, Walter. Uh, good evening, uh, board members. Uh, my name is Jordan Begay. I also uh, come from the Navajo tribe. I'm the Community Health and Wellness Division Director at Native Health. Uh, I'm going on six months now, so it's exciting. Um, I'm excited to be part of the team. Uh, again, Native Health is a great benefit to our urban American Indians. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. And last, I, I really do want to recognize uh, Ms. Shri Tayaba, uh, second, our uh, second assistant for the board and the administrative assistants, I think, uh, without whom the uh, wheels would not turn. So uh, I want to recognize her for all of her work she does for the organization and the board. So Jeannie, I think that took longer than we thought, but uh, I'm glad we have a, a good audience and everybody has been introduced. That's okay. It's important that they know who we are and, and what we're what we're up to. Thank you for that, Walter. I appreciate that. And yes, thank you, Cherie, because without her, we would not have this meeting today. <laughs> Next up on the agenda, Sean Sellers, a uh, member of the board, is going to be um, recognizing a former board member, Dr. Leland Fairbanks. Thank you, Madam Chair. We we're always very happy and honored to uh, celebrate past uh, Native Health board members. And uh, I can think of no better honor than uh, previously retired uh, Dr. Leland Fairbanks, who served on the Native Health board for 15 years. And uh, 
Dr. Fairbanks, um, I will also just briefly mention a little bit of his past. It is very vast and very an amazing resume. Um, he worked for the United States uh, Public Health Commission Corps, retired as captain. Years of service was from 1957 to 1988. Uh, current president of the Arizonans Concerned About Smoking Coalition. Uh, current health committee member of the East Valley NAACP. Uh, current uh, board of trustees member of the International Network Towards Smoke-Free Hospitals. And uh, Dr. Fairbanks was recently selected as recipient of the 2020 Retiree of the Year Award for the Commission Course Officer Association of the United States Public Health Service. Now, unfortunately, they uh, weren't able to have a formal event uh, as Mr. Fairbanks, Dr. Fairbanks was to be formally recognized at the Commission Officers Foundation Annual Scientific and Training Symposium. But unfortunately, due to COVID-19 and, pan and pandemic outbreak, uh, the event had to be uh, postponed. And instead, there was a virtual uh, Zoom meeting, very much like what we're having this evening with you all, where he was formally awarded and recognized uh, just yesterday at the event and uh, on behalf of all the Native Health Board of Directors, uh, we just wanna send a, uh, a tremendous thanks and congratulations and uh, tremendous, tremendous amount of respect that we all have for Dr. Fairbanks for his uh, knowledge and wisdom and all the accolades and uh, all the uh, proud 15 years that he served on the Native Health Board of Directors. So uh, again, on behalf of all the Board of Directors, uh, thank you and congratulations to uh, Dr. Fairbanks. Thank you for that, Sean. And yes, thank you to Dr. Fairbanks for his contributions. Next on the agenda, we want to, as a board and as an organization, we want to recognize our uh, past president, uh, Mr. Sean Sellers. I want to highlight some of the accomplishments that he, uh, as the leader of the board, has accomplished in the last couple of years. Um, because I want him to, I want us to uh, acknowledge and recognize his hard work and his leadership. I learned a lot from him as I came onto the board. Um, we did, uh, we did get him a nice plaque to commemorate his service uh, as the president of the board, and I believe we mailed that over to him in this uh, virtual environment that we have right now. Um, so hopefully, we'll get a picture soon so that we can display that uh, at Native Health. So some of the things that uh, Sean was able to accomplish along with the board in the last couple of years of his tenure um, is a lot of growth, a lot of big growth, so a lot of big decisions. Um, Native Health Mesa opened under his leadership. Um, we also began psychiatry services. The children's food and backpack program began. Um, we also began the monthly community gathering and dinners. Uh, we upgraded the website and unveiled our, our new website, which was much more informative. It's great. Uh, Read It Neat began in Mesa. Some other highlights, important ones, Native Health celebrated a 40th anniversary. The Arizona at Work opened at Native Health Central. People looking for work can come to Native Health. They can get help finding jobs. Our commodity senior food program began at Native Health Central, West and Mesa. We had our first annual open house at Mesa. Uh, and last year we had our board annual meeting at Mesa uh, under Sean's leadership. That's only a highlight of some of the changes in programs and growth that we experienced um, as, an, as an organization under Sean. And I wanted to uh, formally thank him uh, I don't know if he knows how much I learned from watching him and from listening to him. Um, he is, has also uh, given of himself at volunteer events 110% for everything that Native Health has going on. Um, I will tell you that I, I was wary about filling his shoes, uh, but I'm doing um, the best I can to do that because those are big shoes to fill. So Sean, thank you so much for your service and leadership for our organization. And I look forward to our continued um, working partnership to make this organization the best we can. Well, thank you, Madam President. It is uh, an absolute honor and a privilege to serve Native Health uh, in this capacity. And 
as previous uh, president, um, as you well know, it is a coalition. It does take a tremendous amount of effort from all the staff, from the personnel, from the providers, from the leadership team, to the volunteers, to everyone who makes Native Health a, a tremendous success. And again, I could not do it without all the active board members. Um, so again, thank you very much for the honor. I greatly appreciate it. And I did receive the beautiful plaque uh, this past Saturday and look forward to taking a picture to hopefully put in a future newsletter. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Up next on our agenda is an update on our COVID-19 response by our CEO, Mr. Walter Murillo. Thank you. Uh, before I begin, I just also want to reiterate or echo your uh, you know, accolades of Sean. I think uh, I don't know that many more people in the organization staff or board has attended uh, more events than Sean. And also, he's at the last minute uh, taking leadership roles and emceeing and, and other various things at the events and always, always appreciated uh, his interaction with, uh, with uh, the, the programs of Native Health. So I'm going to now uh, change and share my screen on and show the Native Health response to COVID in terms of our planning and phase in of, of activities that we've done. So I'm, it's very difficult for me to tell if, we're, if I'm sharing the correct screen, but I, I believe this is, shows the three phases of uh, Native Health planning. And I really wanna, want to at this point uh, thank a lot of people at the very beginning with uh, Brian Robles, um, Angela Young, and Deanna Sangster, and Dr. Dunnigan, and, and Emily, and getting things going from zero to 100 miles an hour in a matter of uh, a week. Uh, you know, Emily uh, working very, very diligently on uh, moving behavioral health online and then assisting medical to moving to online. And um, and also with Dr. Dunnigan working uh, to have that come to practice really very quickly. And, um, you know, I, I, I have to really praise all of the folks that uh, have worked very hard and Brian Robles for uh, creating this, our general plan that we have been following since the beginning. Um, uh, since the beginning, uh, we have moved quite a bit of services off uh, out of the offices, uh, providing telehealth, uh, also with telecommuting um, for staff, also including WIC telephone visits, visits for home visiting and Health Start as well. So as we moved into uh, phase two, um, when COVID became a community spread in the state, um, we, we implemented more significant changes in which we started closing uh, buildings for public access. We started screening um, outside. And at the time, the temperature was cool enough that we could do that. Started screening and monitoring outside. And, and all along throughout this, this process, we were been following the recommendations and guidelines of the CDC and ADHS. So we've been really following them as they change, and I would have to note that they do change. And early on, they sometimes change daily. Now they seem to change every other week, but they, they continue to change. And I think our staff do a very good job of monitoring those changes. Um, there have been a, quite a significant number of changes as well to the way Native Health operates in addition to, to um, the telework, telemedicine, and virtual visits, uh, a principal, uh, activity of Native Health had been an extensive outreach program. Um, there wasn't a, a, an American Indian or Alaska Native focused event that went on in the city or even the county without the presence or sponsorship of Native Health. And of course, that all began to change with the immediate cancellation of the uh, Walk for the Land and the People. And it extends through, the, it's going to extend through the end of this year with the uh, cancellation of the open house and the children's pageant. However, I mean, I don't despair. I think those are great events for the community. And we're learning a lot on how to move our programming to online and virtual uh, capacities. So um, I look forward to the innovative uh, ways that our staff will allow these things to move forward online. 
Um, I'm looking forward to an online children's pageant. I'm looking forward to an innovative way that we can conduct an online or virtual uh, uh, open house. So um, there's more to come. And I think uh, the transition of staff to this new environment has been outstanding. And we don't, I don't expect to see any changes uh, rapidly as we're still in a period of still discovery about the COVID-19 virus. So other things that we've done is reduce our on-site clinic hours, um, closing at five, but we're still offering telemedicine service till seven. Um, as we moved into phase three, we closed our buildings to the general public, uh, limited our own staff from moving from building to building. Um, we've also continued uh, canceling events. And as I said, now our events are canceled through the remainder of the year. Um, Let's see, we have uh, also uh, followed the CDC guidelines for temperature monitoring at the front desk for staff and for uh, patients. And we've also been doing P uh, PPE and cleaning for our staff and uh, at our facilities. We had to, unfortunately, at the beginning, and now it seems that uh, it will be breaking up, but uh, some of our programs that weren't able to deal with the general public are home visiting, our Health Star, youth resiliency program, and even diabetes uh, prevention, weren't able to initially continue their uh, grant focused objectives. And so uh, there was a work pool formed and fortunately um, they were there in order to assist the growing need from the increase in unemployment, the uh, higher demand of other resources that, uh, that our patients needed in terms of uh, food and uh, soon here, I think that Native Health will need to respond to other high demands and other social determinants uh, of health uh, areas. So um, I'm really very, very uh, honored. I, I, I don't have enough adjectives to say of, of my uh, association with uh, the staff at Native Health, but I think they've done an outstanding job and a real self-starter really innovative ways that they are responding to the COVID crisis and maintaining the mission of Native Health to serve the American Indian Alaska Native community and other underserved uh, communities in Phoenix. So with that, you know, I'll leave that as a, a summation of our COVID response. Thank you, Walter. And I agree, I want to echo the staff of Native Health has been amazing as they respond and they change and they pivot and they adjust and they work as a team. So I, I we all see that and um, we're very proud of them and, and we're very thankful to have this group. Next up on our agenda, Dr. Diana Dunnigan is going to talk to us about the Native Health testing process for COVID-19. Hi, everybody. I also want to um, reiterate that I have been really impressed with the organization's response to COVID-19 and the leadership that Walter's provided during this. Um, it, we're far exceeding what some of the other community health centers have done. So it's been really exciting to be part of the process. So um, I did want everybody to know that we are testing for COVID. Um, we've been testing basically from the beginning of the onset of the pandemic. So we're testing right now for current COVID infection at all of our native health clinics. So um, also, as Walter said, all patients and staff are required to wear a mask upon entry to the native health clinic. So when someone comes in for a COVID test, they are required to wear a mask. Um, new patients coming in for testing will be asked to come to, into the clinic to register. That said, we are working on setting up a portal so that the patients can register online. So hopefully that will be coming soon so that we can register our new patients online and they can conduct their entire visit um, via telemedicine and outside of the clinic. But currently new patients are brought into the clinic and will be brought into an isolation room in the clinic. Um, generally, if they are suspected for being COVID positive, the medical provider actually calls the patient while they're in the exam room and conducts the visit by telephone unless there's um, something via the vital signs or the presentation that suggests the need for an exam. And um, 
for the COVID test, the medical assistant or the nurse actually perform the test. The test is a um, nasal swab, which I think is on the next slide. Oh, sorry, I'll get to that in a second. It, existing, existing patients um, are scheduled as telephone, telehealth visits and the medical provider conducts the visit by telephone. Um, the patient actually will be asked to remain outside the clinic at the appointed time. So the visit happens by phone and the patient waits outside while the MA or nurse come outside to perform the test. The patient does not enter the building. The test is done, it's a swab in the nose. And I did um, write this for the community. So I know that some, many of you, um, this might be you know, a little bit basic for you, but the swab's done in the nose. Um, the test is sent out to the lab and we expect the results in about three to five days, sometimes longer, but it's actually getting shorter. Um, and we now have the Abbott now test that we can, so we're planning to implement the rapid test soon. While you're waiting for the results of your test, we recommend that you stay home. So that means no grocery store, no outings, no family visits, nothing. So really stay home and keep your family and the community safe. And we also recommend that um, the best you can to isolate from family members. So try to stay in separate rooms, try to even wear masks at home. And um, there's currently no antibody testing available at Native Health. So we offer testing only for the current infections. If, does anyone have any questions about that before we move on to the next topic? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dunnigan, I appreciate that. Next up on our agenda is an annual report to the community. So Native Health produces a, a book every year, and I know we have it virtual this year, we also have it in hard copy. And it is our, our annual report for the previous year. So the, so the 2019 uh, Native Health Annual Report, I want to highlight some uh, information that you will find in here. You will find not only your um, board of directors, but you will find uh, information about the accomplishments and the um, uh, successes that Native Health has faced over the last year, um, which includes a lot of, as I was reading it, it includes a lot of our outdoor activities, our um, special events that we normally hold, which are not occurring this year um, due to COVID-19. Um, one of the things that I really think are the most important is that our team at Native Health at all of our locations have been um, uh, so so quick to respond. And I know we've already addressed that. There it is. I know we've already addressed how quick they have been to respond and to work as a team to provide services um, and to change how we do things so that we can continue to support our community. Um, one of the big things that uh, Native Health was able to implement was the virtual health care visits. So they were using uh, uh, iPads and phones and um, cell phones to ensure that um, we still were there for our um, patients and that we were still able to provide services. So that's one of the real important um, um, challenges that were met really well. If we look at our medical page here, some of the highlights I want to bring to your attention are some of the activities that uh, are held. And we just talked about the COVID testing, so you know that that's available. They, they did a, a COVID testing blitz for five weekends in a row. They stood out in the heat and, and uh, did their best to provide those services to our community. If you haven't been to Native Health Mesa, I encourage you to go. They have um, a beautiful building over there that is continued to um, be expanded and improved. We have 18 exam rooms. We have behavioral health services. You, they also have um, food distribution at that site. Um, Native Health West this year celebrated 10 years. So Native Health West has been uh, out here on the west side for 10 years. They're providing medical services, um, WIC, summer food programs, um, 
We also have the uh, back to school physicals for um, children. We have immunizations. They get the free backpacks to get them ready for school. Um, we uh, continue to collaborate with our community. We provide flu shots at the ASU American Indian Student Support Program and at Maricopa Community College's American Indian Outreach Program. So we do the flu shots every year there. We also do them in our clinics. So if you need a flu shot, I encourage you to get that every year. Um, we also have our uh, behavioral health department who has also pivoted to assist our uh, patients in need with telephonic and virtual health care. They still offer um, individual counseling, group counseling. Uh, so if you are finding yourself in need of services, we have many different programs that can help and assist you there. The Methamphetamine and Suicide Prevention Initiative, um, that was part of our um, grant programs. They're providing mental health first aid, safe talk, native hope, and assist. Um, they also reintroduced the Native Stand program. Um, they held a special event before COVID, of course, uh, showing the movie More Than Fry Bread, which as we all know is a very funny movie, um, and helping youth to understand about their choices that they make during their time. Um, we also continued with the behavioral health monthly community gatherings and dinner events, and those are held at Central and Mesa. So if you're ever interested, come out to one of our dinners and you'll hear from a speaker. Um, those are on hold, of course, because of COVID right now, but we hope to get back to doing those sort of activities for the community. If you look at our um, next page, which is community health and wellness, you're gonna see some pictures of some of the activities that we held and um, some delicious corn. Um, this year. Um, they have uh, several programs that include uh, maternal and child health. Uh, they focus on families and young children. They provide home visits. Um, right now, of course, they're virtual because of the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, they provide classes um, to help with cooking and um, healthy lifestyles. We have our community garden. Um, we have youth programs to teach them resilience and um, cultural uh, information and aspects such as a drum making class, uh, plant identification, uh, beading classes. Um, we're still doing a lot of those classes virtually. Um, if you check our Facebook page, you'll see a lot of videos from some of those classes. So if you want to get connected with some of those um, programs that we hold, uh, please let us know and we'll help get you connected. Um, our WIC program, we provided services to over 1,500 clients. Um, these services are still being provided during COVID-19. It is being provided virtually. If you need assistance with um, accessing these services, again, give us a call and we'll help you get connected. Um, if we go over to Welberto on the next page in Native Talk, Arizona, um, Walter's gonna talk a little bit more about that, but Native Talk is our radio station, our radio um, program, sorry. Uh, and it's, uh, we're in our eighth year at RadioPhoenix.org. So if you go to RadioPhoenix.org, you can see interviews and discussions regarding cultural health events, uh, uh, cultural health, native health, indigenous um, activities. Um, we also uh, cast these on our Facebook page, so you can catch them there. And if you haven't met or seen Welberto, He's amazing. He travels all over uh, the world, and we have pictures of him on all of our social media and in the report here, so you can see where Wilberto has been and what his adventures have been. And this year, he has um, gone to Asia. He's gone to Greece. He's been in Canada and all over the U.S. Um, we all love uh, Mr. Welberto, I think he does an amazing job of traveling and spreading the news about Native health. Um, 
What's kind of uh, unfortunate or is unfortunate this year because of COVID-19, we're not going to be able to hold our uh, diabetes prevention camp for youth. But in our report, you can see some pictures from last year's camp. Um, we had over 60 youth attend the camp and learn about diabetes prevention, nutrition, healthy living. And they participated in traditional activities and youth resilience workshops. Um, they all had a great time. And uh, this is something that I was looking forward to this year to be a little more involved to see this camp. But of course, COVID decided differently. But we'll, we will come back to it next year for sure. Um, Walter gave us a nice update on COVID-19, but again, um, I have to just kind of reiterate, it is a giant team effort for uh, Native Health to pivot and still be able to provide services. And they did such a great job at doing that. They are committed to their patients. We are committed to our community. We stand by our mission um, and we are here to help you in any way that you need. If, if, if we, if we um, don't have the service or we don't know what it is, we will find that for you and help get you in the right direction. We've had, um, we were fortunate to receive donations from many organizations to um, assist in providing our services. And you'll see the list there in the booklet. Again, you can receive it electronically or we have it in hard copy. Um, we have continued with our food distributions to help, especially during this time as individuals are, um, some are being laid off um, due to businesses closing. So uh, again, reach out to us if you need some assistance. The next page we're going to talk about um, continued growth and responding to our community needs. Just a little bit. And that's all about, um, again, the food that we have available uh, in our food programs and educational programs for the public as well. We, if you uh, want to learn about financial literacy, uh, we have kindergarten boot camp. And I just saw um, on our Facebook page, we were advertising for our kindergarten boot camp the other day. So if you have a young one that's getting ready for school, uh, get a hold of us so we can um, get your young one ready for school. Um, we also, don't forget, uh, we have the Arizona Department of uh, Economic Security. They provide the access, medical health insurance, SNAP, the nutrition assistance, and TANF. And then we also have the Arizona at work jobs assistance. They have an office right there in Native Health Central. Some of the programs that we um, that we put on, or one of my favorite programs that we uh, sponsor is the Native American Children's Pageant. And you're gonna see a beautiful picture there of some of our participants last year. It grows every year. It does kick off the, the uh, Native American Recognition Days for us. Uh, I encourage you to come out and watch these talented young um, youth embrace their culture and, and showcase and highlight that for you on the stage. We won't have it this year, of course, because of COVID-19, but when it comes back, I hope to see you there. Um, we had our annual open house this last year. It was included a health fair funded by Blue Cross, Blue Shield. We gave health screenings, there was food, there was games. Um, and we, we gave booster car seats that were provided by the Gila River Injury Prevention out to about 200 families. So that was an amazing event. Um, we also provide the emergency assistance program. Last year we held uh, Laughter is the Best Medicine as a fundraiser for that program to provide assistance to families that are coming down um, from the rural areas into uh, the city for uh, health reasons for their family. And we provide assistance to help them um, financially support that um, travel and um, place to stay. Laughter is the best medicine. We had um, a great time last year. We had performers and refreshments, illusionists. If you've um, seen Tatanka Means, the comedian, he was there to give a show. Um, it was an amazing time. We had a great night. It was held at the Madison Performing Arts Center in Phoenix. And then we also held Red Out. 
And that was amazing. That read out was all about uh, music from Daryl Tonema, Keith Sakola, and Randy Kim. It was a sold out crowd. We had food. It was amazing. So when we can get back to entertaining, we look forward to seeing you all at our, at our events. Lastly is the financial health of the organization. <clears throat> And as you can see in this graphic, we continue to grow as an organization. We continue to expand and innovate and um, <clears throat> implement programs to support our patients and our community. <clears throat> you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, from 2017, <clears throat> we had $12,000 two years ago, or 12, 12 million, two, years ago but if we look at 2019 we're up to 16 and that means we have funds to continue to to grow and innovate and provide services for our community the last page of our um, annual report contains our funding sources and our audited revenue if you um, review this and read this and you have questions, please reach out to us. We would be happy to help um, explain what you're seeing. Do we have any questions or is there anything else we need to uh, include? We're gonna move on to um, something I've been looking forward to all night, reappointment of board members. So this year we had three board members who uh, whose terms they are um, um, uh, voluntary so board members are voluntary but when they come on um, they are they come on for a, a finite period of time so uh, three years is our is our um, board serving time however at the end of that time um, you can either be asked to continue or you can roll off and, and maybe come back to the board another time. But what I'm happy about this year is that the three board members that we had come to the end of their terms have all agreed to come back and, and serve another three years. And that would be Dr. Rishi Popat, uh, Ms. Elena Young, and Mr. Sean Sellers. So I'm very, very happy to have them uh, reappointed to the board as they've done so much good work as they've been here. And I look forward to uh, doing more work with them as they all have uh, their unique contributions uh, to our organization. So welcome back, Rishi, Sean, and Elena. Thank you. Next up on our agenda is Walter with uh, some announcements. Thank you, Jeannie, and welcome. Uh, just a, a, a housekeeping. I think you'll need to take a, a motion and a, a vote on the reappointment. Oopsie. I was all happy just to say you're back. You can't get back out now. All righty, let's have a motion to uh, reappoint uh, Dr. Popat, and Ms. Elena, and Mr. Sean to the board. This is Tanisha. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Tanisha. Do I have a second? This is Olivia. I'll make a second. Thank you, Olivia. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, officially, the motion is passed and you all belong to us for the next three years. Thank you, Madam President. I'm very happy. Thank you, Sean. I'm glad you're here. Okay, Walter, thank you for that reminder. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I have a, a, just a few announcements to make and I'm not certain if I, if I have a, gonna have assistance from the staff on these announcements, but uh, just I'm happy to announce the re- uh, starting to uh, redo the um, Native Talk Arizona radio show. We've been, we've been running reruns since the COVID crisis. And, uh, we've had to uh, look for a new studio because the studio that the city of Phoenix was providing has been closed. So we'll be uh, 
we have a, a big lineup of guests and uh, and uh, we were responding to a, a large number of surprisingly large number of people asking what happened to the radio show. So uh, it's coming back and it's coming back with new episodes. So look for that on uh, Phoenix Talk or Phoenix uh, Radio. Um, next is laughter is the best medicine. Um, I'm not sure that we have uh, an announcement for that. I probably just that it's been, uh, I guess, delayed for this year as the board is making plans for uh, next year. And then the 2020 census, a reminder of the importance of the census. Native Health has been doing a lot of work in coalitions with uh, local uh, Phoenix uh, Indian nonprofits. There's a, a large billboard on Central Indian School. And we've also been sending out Facebook reminders, but please, remind everybody uh, that you know to complete the 2020 census. I know that they had been uh, sending out uh, announcement after announcement and mail and mail. We even did a virtual spot on how to complete your census. And uh, it's very important to, the, uh, to us as citizens of Phoenix and of Arizona, but it's also important for us as American Indians, Alaska Natives to be counted uh, in the uh, census. So with that, those are my announcements. Okay, before we uh, close out our meeting, does anyone else have any other announcements or comments they would like to add? Jeannie, this is Walter again. I, I failed to uh, introduce another member of our senior staff at the beginning of the, uh, of the uh, meeting, and that is uh, Mr. Cody Nelson, our CFO. I, okay. This is Christina. Hi. Hey, so, you know, I'd like to thank, you know, the Native Health staff and our CEO, Walter, for their exemplary work and efforts, you know, to, I mean, for our local community and everything that they've done last minute, um, the changes, especially with COVID-19, the swift action, the the swift planning to keep the safe, you know, the staff safe, the community safe. Um, there has been, you know, many asks, and we've been nothing but supportive. The great ideas, the innovation of, you know, the telehealth and you know the response time um, has been. It's just been super impressive. You know, I'm super honored. You know, and I know. For the board, you know, there's no, there is no wonder why Walter, you received the Health Equity Consumer Health Advocate Award this year. So, you know, thank you very much for all your hard work. Thank you, Native Health. Thank you, Christina. Here, here. I agree. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, I accept that uh, those uh, accolades on on behalf of the entire staff, as I said. It's just really a privilege to work with these folks. I echo all of that. This We can't say enough about uh, Walter's leadership and the organization's um, response to this pandemic. It's uh, been exemplary and I believe it was um, Angela who, or maybe it was Dr. Dunnigan who pointed out that Native Health has responded in such a manner that, that they continue to be the model for other community health centers on how they should operate, for sure. Is there any other um, comments or announcements that you would like the community to know before we close out tonight? I know it's a little odd to have a virtual meeting with, it's hard to interact um, and to, to talk to an audience that that you can't see and they can't see you, but I appreciate everyone coming tonight um, and giving it your best to showcase um, who we are and what we do and how we are here for our community. If there's no other comments or announcements, I will call uh, this meeting, or we'll adjourn this meeting. And Madam President, this is Sean. Just a real quick uh, announcement for everyone. I know it was probably briefly covered, but uh, please, for all those who are interested, please subscribe to our Native Health newsletter. 
there's a tremendous amount of information and resources that is shared on a monthly basis and a lot of hard work and effort is put into that with a lot of great, fantastic information for everyone. And please follow us on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, lots of great, again, content information that's being shared. And I know we're in a time of virtual um, interaction and meeting, but uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we're not together and we're not isolated. Uh, we're very much together and there's a lot of great resources uh, for you and your family that's readily available. And uh, thanks everyone again for uh, their continued participation and another great year. Well said, Sean, thank you. Do you happen to know the um, email address that they can reach out to to sign up for that newsletter? Go to our Native Health website. Uh, there is uh, a link uh, where you can sign up for our newsletter. Okay. Okay. Uh, I echo everyone's comments, please, uh, in the community, if you need any assistance, if you need any um, guidance, uh, give us a call and we'll get you pointed in the right direction. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate this first uh, virtual annual meeting. I'll adjourn the meeting at 6.09 p.m. June 16th, 2020. Thank you and great job, Jeannie. Thank you. Thank you.